This video here is going to show you the steps in the process on how to solve for the missing side length of two figures that are similar, okay? So we know that in this question that the two figures are similar because this little squiggle mark here without the equals underneath, that means similar, okay? And what we know about similar figures is that the side lengths are proportional, okay? That's written right here. And, but we have corresponding congruent sides, okay? So remember when the similarity statement tells me which angles are congruent to which ones. So remember P is listed first and T is listed first. So that means angle P and angle T are congruent, okay? Now, if you notice, Q and U are listed second. So those two angles are congruent. Then we have R and V. Both of those are listed third. So those two angles are congruent. And then of course, last but not least, we have W and S, which are listed last, that are congruent. Okay, so now that we know, now that we've labeled my diagram. I can now set up a proportion to solve for my missing side length. Now, if you want to, you could do this ahead of time if, it, if this is helpful to you. If you want to match up all the side lengths first, um, you don't necessarily have to. But if it's helpful, then it makes sense. So if you notice PQ are, is between the blue and the red angle. So PQ is gonna be proportional to PQ. Okay. Then QR which is between the red and the green angle is corresponds with UV, which is also between the red and the green angle. Okay, and because I listed TU on top, because that's the final image as opposed to the original, um, that means UV has to be on top and then RQ has to be on the bottom. Okay, horizontally we have to match Oh, sorry. Um, we have to match all the figures, all the side lengths from one figure have to either all go in the numerator or all have to go in the denominator. Okay, so now we have our S that's between the black and the red, and that matches up with VW. side is PS which is the blue and black angle and that is also the blue and black angle so TW to PS Oop, that's an R okay so remember the scale factor applies to all four sides. So that is what allows me to determine or find a missing side length. Okay, so PS obviously is what I am solving for. So I'm gonna take my, we know TW matches with PS, okay. Um, and I can use 
any one of the other um, fractions to help solve. But if you notice, PQ and TU, my two blue sides, those don't have any numbers or measurements. So clearly I can't use those two sides because they're not helpful to me at all. Um, so what we need to do is choose, so my only other number on my original quadrilateral is 35, which is RS. Okay, now RS, is proportional to VW. Okay, so those, all three of these, three of the four, have a numeric value which will allow me to solve. Okay, so now I'm gonna fill in my numbers. Okay, so TW is 15, PS is X, that's what we're, that's what we're solving for. VW is 25, and RS is 35. Okay, now I have a proportion that I can solve. And to solve this, we are going to cross multiply. Okay, so. With your calculator, we can do 35 times 15, which is 525, is equal to 25x, okay? The cross products um, are equal to one another. That's why we're allowed to cross multiply. So to solve for my missing side length, or x, I'm going to divide 525 by 25. And what I get is that x equals, or the length of ps, is equal to 21. Now I can double check to see if I did this correctly. Okay. By Filling in, let me do this. So TW was 15, and we found PS to be 21. Okay, now if I simplify this, both 15 and 21 are divisible by 3. Okay, so if I divide both. 15 and 21 by 3, I get 5 sevenths. Okay, now, my other proportion was 25 over 35. Okay, and both of those are divisible by 5 which happens to be when I reduce 5 sevenths. So the scale factors match. So I have solved for the correct side length. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, so here we have two triangles. So I have I J, K, and L, M, N. So I, first thing you want to do, step number one, label your diagram. Okay, and when I'm talking, when I say label your diagram, what I mean is label the corresponding congruent angles. Okay, so I and L are both listed first, so that means I and L are congruent. J and M are listed second, so those two are congruent, and then of course K and N are congruent, and it's all because of that symbol right there.
the squiggle and that similarity um, lets me know that these I have corresponding congruent angles. Okay, so from here I can take so LN, which is the green and blue angles, and this is the green and blue angle. Okay, so the second step, what we're going to do is um, we're going to match our corresponding sides. Okay, so, and I match them based on the congruent angles. So, IK corresponds to LM. I'm sorry, LN, because they are both between the green and the blue angle. Okay, now I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, wait a minute, you listed the original image first or on top, and I put the final image on the bottom. Now, if I was trying to solve for the scale factor, that would be incorrect because I've shown you that to find the scale factor, we need to list the final image in the numerator and the original image in the denominator. But when it comes to solving for a missing side length, it doesn't matter the order, okay? That is the one thing, it doesn't make a difference in that case. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Now, IJ, is between the red and the green angle. So IJ corresponds to LM because that side two is also between the red and the green. And then of course by default, the red and blue angles are JK and MN. Okay. So you'll notice here that I have, I actually have solving for two variables, x and y. So based on my proportions that I wrote here, let's fill in the numbers. Okay, so ik is y, ln is 35. IJ is X, LM is 28, and then JK is 54, and MN is 42. Okay. So, what I can do, because remember, you only need four three of the four, you only need to actually, to solve, you only need two proportions. Okay, now everything's equal to each other, so I'm gonna first solve x over 28 equals 54 over 42, and then I can use that same proportion to solve for y. Because remember, the scale factor is the same for all the side lengths. So I'm going to use both the 54 over 42. I'm going to use that scale factor to solve for both x and y. Now, you can just go ahead and cross multiply and divide like I did in the previous problem, or I personally am not a fan of such big numbers. So I can reduce this first before I cross multiply. Now obviously if you have a calculator it doesn't really matter, but if you didn't have a calculator this will help at least the numbers would be smaller. So both 54 and 42 are divisible by 6, which so this is 9 sevenths.
Okay, so I can, so I'm going to solve x over 28 equals 9 over 7. And now I'm going to cross multiply. So 9 times 28 and x times 7. So that gives me 7x is equal to 28 times 9 is 252. And then to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 7. And I get 36. Now that's for x, so that means I, j, is 36. Now, I, j corresponds to L, m. So that's 36 over 28. So I'm going to reduce this to see if it matches my 9 sevenths. So actually both of these are divisible by 4. And sure enough, 36 divided by 4 is 9. 28 divided by 4 is 7. So I did calculate this correctly. So after you match up the sides, we need to, you want to fill in the values of those side lengths like I did in this case here and here. And then the last step is to cross multiply and solve. Okay, so that is how you solve for a missing side length of a similar figure.